Hey everybody, I'm the Urban Watcher, and this video is a tutorial on how to set up the OBS, or also known as the Open Broadcaster Software. Uh, this video is part of a, uh, a larger series on how to become a streamer. I've, uh, I'm putting together a uh, playlist for people that are interesting in streaming uh, that, that covers everything from how to create overlays, how to use bots in their, uh, in their channel, how to do giveaways, how to save the Twitch files locally on their hard drive so that they can edit it and then upload it to YouTube. Um, with, do a little bit more fancy stuff and of course this one is uh, part of how to set up the OBS now one of the things that you're gonna need to know is if you are a uh, getting into twitch and like a lot of people I'm sure that you signed up for twitch and you thought that that would be it you click a button on this on the website and you are broadcasting your your game movie or what or whatever you are trying to broadcast but you probably found out that it's not that simple uh, it's a little bit more complicated so you know in case you didn't know you're gonna need some type of streaming application that allows you to broadcast over the internet and what what I have here is an example of my uh, of my uh, dashboard uh, if you need to see what what twitch offers for you you can click on stream and apps and it's going to take you to this page this is the app page and they offer things like XSplit which is, which is an excellent broadcasting software but it tends to be pretty expensive I mean I think uh, when people are first coming to the Twitch website uh, it it puts people off because they don't they don't there's a there's a cost barrier and I'm here to tell you that there's a way to get into Twitch or broadcasting without having to pay a lot of money or pay virtually uh, no money. The uh, software that you that probably brought you here was the Open Broadcaster software. Um, you can, if you were to do a search for OBS, it's going to be the top search right there, uh, Open Broadcaster software. And if we were to click that, it would take us to their website. So one of the first things that you, you're going to want to do is you're going to want to download the Open Broadcaster software. And it's a free and open source software for recording and, and live streaming. There's a 32-bit version and there's a 64-bit version. And they are constantly uploading, uh, updating the uh, this software. Um, it's not without uh, bugs or anything like, you know, like that. I have uh, occasional disconnects. Uh, but for the most part, I'm pretty happy with this software and I, I think that you know if they ever were to go to a pay uh, model I would pay for this this uh, deal I think it's greatly underrated because a lot of the similar things that you can do in, in, in XSplit you can do in um, the open broadcaster software the OBS and since the since the um, the OBS is open source. They're constantly changing and adapting to the needs of uh, of the community members. So it's constantly evolving. I, I really like uh, seeing how active the community is. So let's go ahead and get into the the meat and potatoes of how to set up the OBS. Now, after you download the OBS, and I'm going to show you mine. This is what it looks like. Uh, the OBS is. I don't want to bring it up too big. Okay. This is the OBS. And in here, the first thing you're going to need to do is get into the settings. And when we go into the settings, let's see if I remember how to do that. Ah, right there. Um, you're going to need to know what encoding information you're going to need. Now, that may sound simple. You may think that you you can easily just jump into it and mess with a lot of this this information. Now, if you're a tech person and you understand everything about technology, then go ahead. I mean, I you can do it. It's it's no big deal. But if you're a lot if you're like a lot of people, you know, some somebody like myself, uh, you really don't want to mess with a lot of the settings on here uh, unless you've done an estimator or you talk to somebody else on what type of setting you're going to need to do. Um, so for that reason, you need to use the online estimator if you're not naturally uh, gifted when it, when it comes to technology. And so the estimator, if you were to um, 
do the Google search on OBS. The estimator is kind of buried on their website, so this is the quickest and easiest way to do that. If you do a Google search of OBS, the estimator is one of the options on the on their Google website. You click on that, and it's going to take you to this. And in the estimator, you uh, you basically put all your graphic information, your hard drive, your your web uh, speed, how uh, how big your your site is, uh, your your in-screen resolution, and then after you hit recommend in settings, it's going to project uh, information for your settings. It's going to tell you to change uh, something from like here's an example, downscale 1.5x or to or 2.0x, and perhaps put your frame rates to 25. Now, let me show you where that where you can do that in the um, in the in your settings here. So once you open up your settings. You, your general, you can title it. Uh, here's the encoder. So this told me to reduce my bit rate. So I'm looking for that uh, video. All right. So uh, frame rate uh, 25, and I reduce my uh, resolution to two. So this this estimator will tell you what to change specific to your uh, settings on your computer. I don't have personally one of the uh, fanciest of, of the computers out there, so I really, you know, there's a lot of stuff on there that I don't change that are that are for uh, more advanced cards and stuff. So that's the basics. If you do this correctly, uh, you will be able to stream. Here is where you put your broadcasting information. You put it on the live stream, the the service that you're using. There, are, uh, there is, there's more than just Twitch TV. There are other sites that you could use. You can put your information there, where the nearest server is, and you're gonna need a uh, a key in order to basically. It's a unique broadcaster key that either Twitch provides or another service provides. And your for Twitch, you can get that key on this uh, Twitching app page. And it's right there. You click on show key, copy and paste that into this information, put the, the dashboard link that brings you to your dashboard. Um, so that's one of the things you can do. I changed the, the hotkeys for mine. Once you're set up, I mean, pretty much after that, uh, you can, you can, you're ready to go and start twitching. Now, um, so I'm, I'm live here and this is my, my stream. So let me explain some of the features that are uh, part of the, the OBS. Uh, the first and main one, of course, is the uh, the monitor capture. So once your once your scenes have you've been you've added your scene, within this scene, you just really need one unless you're going to be doing multiple screens or, or multiple uh, uh, streams. So this one's titled Game Broadcast. So in here, I have all this, but when you start up, there's going to be nothing in the sources. So in order to add a source, you're going to want to click right click and hit add and the first one that I set up was the monitor capture it's gonna ask you to name it and then once you name it uh, there's one right there I'm gonna you can double click and you can tell it what monitor you wanted to put it on uh, these other things that you can put you can select a region to broadcast on your screen uh, or you can broadcast the entire screen you can change the gamma part of it um, it's pretty basic now the other one that you can use is look at your ad features is of course the uh, Windows Capture. Windows Capture I've used for uh, let's say I have a program I do this frequently I have a program on my second monitor and it's not something that I really want to show uh, or, or, or can't be on the same screen as when I'm playing a video game or broadcasting something so I could use a Windows Capture and only capture the inside like of a web page and use that and, and layer it like in Photoshop in here and put it on top of the main screen everything that's on top like in Photoshop will be will be shown above whatever's below it so in here I have my scary cam that is above the main monitor if I were to move this down it would disappear just like you would in Photoshop um, so for the Windows capture um, whatever it is that you want to show, you can change the transparency of it and put it into the uh, into the the main monitor. So it's a monitor within a monitor. Uh, the scary cam is an example of that. Uh, the image is probably one of the easiest ones to do. It's the basics for doing overlays, or if you're trying to do 
a title text uh, like some people uh, like to include a title in their videos and so on the second monitor they will um, put in a text picture that they can click on and off I've already done that but instead of a title pick I put it I used a picture as a, uh, a, a static image uh, that is an overlay so it's also the the foundation of putting overlays and I did create a, a video on how to create overlays and put them in uh, in twitch you can see that in the other series um, in order to click it on and off so let me show you what it what happens when I do that so if I click this it goes away there it is so that is an overlay and to, to add that all you have to do is hit add image you'll name it and then it's going to ask you to uh, uh, point to a picture on your hard drive that it's going to re reference if you move that picture uh, just like a web page your link will go dead and you'll have to relink it and uh, you, uh, nothing will show up in your broadcast now the other one that I have here is the image slideshow which is fantastic for anybody that does gaming or you're trying to keep private information or if you need to take a restroom break or whatever it is uh, you should you might consider putting a slideshow uh, for me and I'm gonna show you what one right now uh, this is my be right back uh, slideshow it's for when I need to go walk the dog or use the restroom and I have a series of images that pop up and they scroll uh, you can set the scroll rate of these images okay um, to change every 15 seconds 30 seconds an hour it doesn't really matter um, so th that is the uh, be right back a lot of people use it whenever they're changing servers and they're going from and they don't want uh, a lot of their viewers to know where they're going to be going uh, sometimes people get hacked that way so it's just kind of a hidden security measure protect your passwords it's a good idea to have some type of temporary thing the other thing that we have of course if you're going to be broadcasting uh, video games uh, it, this one's pretty simple you click on right you right click on the space here and you put add and game capture uh, and my game capture is there. I don't actually have a game open right now, so I don't have it loaded. But it's one of those things, and, and it's not completely streamlined, but you really need to uh, have this open before you launch a video game. And you're probably going to have to uh, uh, Alt-Shift out of it in order to click a refresh, uh, if you refresh this, in order for it to come back. And it won't show up um, until you actually get back in the game. So there is a, a little minor configuration before you actually start streaming so you need to plan ahead uh, it's not uh, don't make the beginner mistake of, of streaming and think that because you click that button that it's automatically going to pick up your, your streaming feed uh, it's, that's, that's something that a lot of people have made a mistake now if you're interested in learning how to do how to set up the camera this is a really cool feature a lot of people um, have a hard time because they think it's it's pretty difficult it's really not uh, one of the things you're gonna need to do is go to your global sources um, in the global sources you need to hit add and video capture device and you're gonna have to name it so I'm gonna type that and in here it's gonna show you all your computers video capturing devices it might be a card it might be uh, it might be you might have multiple cameras for I've actually seen people use uh, different angles uh, especially if they're having like a guest you, you could actually transform your office into like a radio talk show type thing it's pretty interesting so you click on your web uh, your webcam um, and then you can configure to how you want it to show um, I can I you can change the properties of anything uh, for this broadcast I chose even though I have an HD camera I uh, I chose to broadcast at a very low rate because sometimes when I'm playing games I don't want my picture to to cover something that's that's uh, vital inside a game so I try to minimize it now for other videos where I'm doing just talk um, I do blow up the picture and just because you add a picture does not mean that it's going to be boom front and center you're still going to have to configure it and it can be kind of frustrating so for instance if I was click on the overlay it will always down uh, put the image into the top left hand corner to where you cannot see it and so what you're going to have to do is once you put this image or the camera or a slideshow once you do this you're going to have to right click and put position fit to screen in order for it to blow up from a little micro dot all the way into the full screen and then from there position it wherever you want it uh, it's not as easy as dragging and pulling it's one of my big complaints about OBS but 
it's free so you can't really complain too much I mean you can put everything in the corner or in the center so you have to plan around that whenever whenever you're designing your overlays so let me just cover again uh, this is the this has been a tutorial on how to set up the OBS it's the open broadcaster software you need to use the estimator in order to uh, get the, the 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 data for how to uh, how to configure it in the settings uh, once you do that it's uh, you need to create a scene after you've created the scene you have to add the sources of your scene some uh, this is an example of what I have now the one I didn't use was the text um, and the text is pretty simple uh, let's say that I have a uh, I wanted to a, hold on let me show you here before I take this off um, I can easily click off the main monitor what I'm gonna do is click off the main monitor and it's gonna go black and once it goes black I'm gonna click on text text is on top you should see something that says like example of text and the way you add that is add text very simple very easy and you can edit that at any time this is example of text um, I'm the urban watcher okay so let me click on that and there it is well let me make sure Whoa. and position it get the screen there it is so you right there that was an example of what I was talking about the text was put in the bot micro bottom left hand corner and I you couldn't see it so I would have to resize the image so you can easily move it around um, and I'm gonna put this in the center Boom, there it is okay let me put you back alright I, like I said I'm the urban watcher and um, I've, I'm producing a series on how to become a streamer uh, some some of those topics are you know how to mess with the overlays how to create the overlays either in Photoshop or GIMP uh, PNG files we also cover um, how to do uh, bots in your chat so when you do get a, a, a large number of audience members you can control and prevent uh, a lot of the trolling or cursing or uh, needless advertisement that people do okay so uh, if you like this please do me a favor hit that subscribe um, you know follow thumbs up make a comment it really helps uh, the channel it helps other people find uh, this uh, this tutorial. So this is the Urban Watcher and my YouTube channel is The Zombie Professor. I also have a blog that you can check out. It's mainly about video games uh, and I will be uh, putting up other technical uh, tutorials here shortly. So thank you for checking out this video.